Hey, welcome back to the Ruby Tuesday. My name is Ruben and this is my review for Invisible City, another Netflix original series. Before I jump into the review, do give me a thumbs up. It really does help us on the analytics and uh, when you share the love, I feel like the world is a better place. <laughs> for now, let's jump into the review. An underground world is inhabited by mythical creatures evolved from a deep lineage of Brazilian folklore. One detective who finds himself caught in a murder investigation that puts himself in the middle of a battle between these two worlds. So I saw the trailer for this uh, series uh, a while back and when I saw it I thought yeah that is my cup of tea. It has fantastical creatures, all the kind of uh, fantasy realm mixed with the real world. Definitely my cup of tea. Netflix have a cornucopia, cornucopia, cornucopia of these series at the moment. Some hit, some are just full of teen angst and don't hit so much. But I do like to try them all out. Like this is my genre, fantasy. Oh, I'm so excited. And then I got the screeners for them, and they gave me four four screeners. And I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna review it until I have the whole lot. There's only seven episodes. The last episode is only half an hour, which is a very random considering the, how long the other episodes are. I have to say, I didn't love this. Now, don't hate me, I'll get into why, but yeah, I, I, I didn't absolutely love this and I was really hoping I would. Uh, if you don't like reading subtitles right off the bat, uh, I would say that you're not going to like this because you do need to read the subtitles. The dubbing for this isn't great. Um, I didn't mind it. I thought the subtitles was fine. I thought the acting was okay. Where my issues come into this uh, series is with the storyline itself. And that's mostly down to the pacing of the storyline and the reveal of the fantasy creatures. And so when you have the, myth the mythology come into play, it's really exciting. And some of the set pieces... Uh, that are there all kind of centered around rituals and what they do for the most part they're in their human things occasionally you in, in their human skins occasionally you get to see uh, their powers I wanted a lot more of uh, the revelation the reveal of what they can do other mythological mythological creatures I feel like uh, the series was hindered a little bit somewhat uh, with a budget constraint maybe because they're very much centered just on this one story it didn't really evolve past that I know they're doing an origin story of Brazilian folklore fantasy uh, kind of creatures um, and so when you have an origin story, sometimes they are slow. But in the world we are living in, in the Netflix world we are living in, there are so many series that just kind of dive right into it. And so we, when you see the write-up, when you see a trailer, this is what you go in to uh, a series like this with a certain amount of expectation. And so my expectation was raised. I was thinking that we were going to get loads of this kind of fantasy um interactions we're going to see much more and unfortunately that's not the case for the first four episodes you do get into it it's the the story really is centered around eric and his daughter and a, a tragedy that happens at the beginning and he's involved in this this case and eventually this world kind of is revealed but there's a lot of long pauses there's a lot of dialogue there's a lot of stuff that it could be construed as padding until you get to the stuff that you really want to see. Now I understand building character, I understand building a story, but for the most part I think this series instead of being seven episodes could have been four. Then we would have had a lot more faster pacing in the edit, a lot of the dialogue scenes that just felt like unneeded could have been taken out and that this the pacing of the story could have been uh, I, I think flow better. That's just my opinion from a humble dude who's worked in films, who is a writer. I have a bit of understanding in it, so I always hate coming like down on a series and stuff. Well, and people's response is, well, what do you know? You're just a YouTuber. Yeah, I totally get that. That's just my opinion. But I did feel very slow um, and I had to push past episode by episode for me to keep watching. However, on the good part, episode five to seven, is where um, it's at, where the story really kicks into gear, where you see uh, why these creatures are hiding, what, um, the, you know, there's this, there's this mix of intensity that comes through the storyline from about episode five because there is a thing, a, a MacGuffin that's been used to drive the story forward. Sorry, I'm trying to do no spoilers. And so when you see these things have to deal with something and Eric is thrust in there and uh, the reveal of the story, a moment that you didn't see coming, which I really appreciate because sometimes you can read these stories very easily and you're like, I know what's going to happen next. I know what's going to happen next. And there is a lot of that you can guess, but there is a moment where I was like, ah, oh, that is a character revealed that I wasn't expecting, and I really appreciated that. So when you have those moments in episode five, six, and seven, um, and they start 
showing us more of the fantasy creatures or more of their powers that is when it's exciting when you're seeing stuff actually happen rather than them telling you because in the first four episodes there is a lot of cutaway you begin to see what's happening or you begin to see a fight or you begin to see someone die and then just cuts away and then you see them react to what has happened and i think that is a budget constraint thing because that saves a lot of money I get it, but it is somewhat frustrating because it does feel very long-winded. And that's not really how you want to start a series. You want to start it with a, dang, what is going on? They do kind of do that, but it leaves you with those questions. The questions are answered. And where it ends, it kind of leaves it on a bit of a cliffhanger, suggesting that there could be a series if there's an audience for this. However, it could be just a contained story, which is also fine. Sometimes these contained stories are fine. Let me know in the comments below, what did you think of this? Who is your favorite character? What other mythological folklore um, would you like to be seen uh, as a character uh, developed in this series if we get a season two? And what more would you like them to show? Um, that last episode I really enjoyed. There were moments there I was like, that's pretty cool. But I was hoping for a bit more action rather than just a bunch of dialogue in amongst a bit of thriller stuff. There was no point I was ever really scared. So I didn't really know which uh, theme they were going for. Is it just an investigation? Was it just fantasy? They really, really never hit its stride fully. So there were definitely episodes where I enjoyed, definitely episodes where I didn't quite enjoy. I'm going to go down the middle with this and saying give it a C plus. And I think it's definitely got room for um, development. There isn't some of the dialogue that felt like a dialogue. There were some side characters that just felt like they were reading off a script. And then there were other moments I thought that were really good, which is why I'm going straight down the middle and going, yeah, it, it, you might love it, you might hate it. Um, I didn't either. I was just like, yeah, in the middle. Let's see what happens if they get a season two. So yeah, C plus, chat to me in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching this, but most of all until next time, remember, live on Tuesday.